Hello, welcome to this presentation of testing for reflexes. In this video, we will see how the routine physical examination for reflexes is carried out. Let us begin by asking the question, what is a reflex? It is an involuntary response to a stimulus without conscious thought. You may be familiar uh, with the condition when you have accidentally touched a hot object, you suddenly withdraw your hands. This is a typical example of an involuntary response to a stimulus. Reflexes are used to protect the body. Testing for reflexes provides the information regarding the integrity of the central nervous system as well as the peripheral nervous system. Reflex. For any reflex to take place, we need a reflex arc. And this is made up of seven different components. Let's look at each one of them. First and foremost, we need a stimulus, which is a change in the environment. And to detect this, we need a receptor. So this is the receptor, which is a detector for the change of the, that is in the stimulus. And then this information needs uh, to be carried along the sensory component, which is the afferent nerve. And this information has to be relayed to the center, which will be the integrator of the information. Usually the reflex arc, when you are talking of the peripheral reflexes, it will be the spinal cord. After it is information is integrated, this in information needs to be carried away to the effector organ via the efferent nerve, which is will be the motor component. Once it reaches the effector organ, then the response will be seen, which is called as the effect. So all these components are involved in any reflex arc for any of the reflexes that we are going to see. Now, let us look at the types of reflexes. Types of reflexes, you have the visceral reflexes, for example, baroreceptor reflex, chemoreceptor reflex, superficial reflexes, abdominal reflex, plantar reflex, cremastric reflex, deep tendon reflexes like the patellar reflex, the Achilles reflex, biceps tendon reflex. Then we have the cranial nerve reflexes, corneal reflex, vestibulocochlear reflex, vestibulocular reflex, pupillary light reflex, and so on. This type of classification is based on from where these reflexes are going to be elicited. We will concentrate on the deep tendon reflexes as well as the superficial reflexes, which is done in a typical neurological examination. Deep tendon reflexes, they are monosynaptic reflexes and the function of the monosynaptic myotatic reflexes is to resist gravity. We have the monosynaptic reflexes of the upper limb as well as that of the lower limb. First, let us look at the upper limb reflexes. Upper limb reflexes such as biceps jerk, C5 and C6 are the spinal segments. Then we have the brachioradialis reflex, C5, C6 and C7. Extensor digitorium reflex, which is 
C6 and C7. Then you have the triceps jerk which is carried by the C6, C7 and C8. Then we have, then we have the deep tendon reflexes of the lower limb. For example, the patellar reflex uh, as well as the ankle jerk or the Achilles reflex. Petalar reflex is the centers involved are L3, L4. L3 and L4 for the petalar or knee jerk reflex. S1 and S2 for the ankle jerk or Achilles reflex. This particular diagram below shows the root values for these spinal reflexes. If you remember the nursery rhyme, which is slightly modified here, you can start from the lower aspect, that is from the ankle jerk, from there onwards, one, two, buckle my shoes, three, four, kick the door, five, six, pick up the sticks, seven, eight, lay them straight. This is how you can remember from below upwards the nerve root values for each of these reflexes. Next, let us look at the way to elicit these reflexes. Now one has to remember that before eliciting any reflex, the examiner has to introduce himself or herself to the subject, number one, and explain as to what is going to be done in order to get the best response. Uh -huh. Another important note is that you have to test on both the sides, the right as well as the left. You will need a tendon hammer to elicit any of these reflexes. And there are different types of tender hammers. Uh, tendon hammers, one is called as the Taylor's hammer, which is the American version. Then we have the Queen's square hammer, which is the British type of hammer. Then we have a kind of a hybrid which is called as the Babinski telescoping hammer. Any of these can be used in order to elicit the reflexes. Now when eliciting these reflexes you have to be tapping on the tendon of the respective muscle and these are some of the uh, examples shown as to where exactly you need to be tapping to get the reflex. In this diagram, the pathway for the tendon reflexes is explained. To begin with, we need to, when you strike on the particular tendon of the muscle, for example here, what is depicted is the knee jerk or the patellar reflex. You strike on the patellar tendon which is just below the patella. Then there will be stretching of the muscle that is the quadriceps femoris muscle and there are receptors located in the intrafusal muscle fibers called as the muscle spindle. These muscle spindles get stretched and they are sensitive to stretch. This impulse that is generated here is carried along the 1A afferent fibers and these nerve fibers serve as the sensory fibers and are related to the lumbar segments and once they reach there that information is carried now or relayed and carried by the anterior horn cells or the motor neurons coming from there 
which is called as the alpha motor neurons and they go and innervate the same group of muscles that is called receps femoris and result in contraction of the muscle and because of this there will be movement of the lower limb. At the same time we must also remember that the antagonistic muscles that is the hamstrings need to be relaxed and this is brought about through an interneuron supplying the hamstring muscles. Now let us look at each of these reflexes in the upper limb. In the upper limb we look at the biceps jerk first, stimulus stretch of the biceps muscle. This is achieved by tapping on the biceps tendon with a reflex hammer. The receptor is always in the muscle, the muscle spindles of the biceps muscle here. The afferent sensory nerve is the musculocutaneous nerve. The center is C5 and C6. And the efferent nerve or the motor nerve is again by the musculocutaneous nerve. And therefore, these nerves are functioning both for sensory as well as motor. They are mixed nerves. Effector organ is the contraction of the muscle of the biceps or the biceps muscle leading to the effect that is the flexion of the elbow. This is how it has to be elicited. Another important note is when eliciting the reflex, one has to observe the contraction of the respective muscle uh, or a change in the tension, which then will move the limb or the joint. This picture shows or demonstrates how the tendon of the biceps is going to be palpated in the cubital fossa and then placing the thumb over it you tap over your thumb to stimulate the muscle spindle. This is how the reflex is going to be seen. Next we move on to the triceps jerk. Herein the stimulus, we stretch the triceps muscle by tapping on the triceps tendon which is at the back of the hand <coughs> and you strike over the tendon the closer to the olecranon process. The receptor is the muscle spindle and the afferent sensory nerve is via the radial nerve. The centers are C7 and C8. The efferent motor nerve is carried again by the radial nerve, the motor component. The effector is the contraction of the triceps muscle leading to extension of the elbow joint. This is how one can elicit the triceps jerk by tapping on the triceps tendon over the olecranon process. Next we move on to the brachioradialis jerk. Herein the stretch of the brachioradialis muscle is brought about by tapping on the brachioradialis tendon near the wrist. The receptor is this muscle spindle of the brachioradialis muscle. The afferent sensory nerve is carried via the radial nerve. Centers are C5 and C6. Efferent nerve is via the more radial nerve itself, the motor component. Then the effector is the contraction of the brachioradialis muscle, leading to the effect that is supination of the forearm. This is how the upper limb reflexes are tested. The brachioradialis jerk is elicited near the wrist. Next we move on to the lower limb reflexes, the patella or knee jerk. Stimulus, stretching of the quadriceps femoris muscle, 
tapping on the patella tendon just below the patella receptors again the muscle spindles of the quadriceps femoris muscle afferent sensory nerve carried along the femoral nerve center is l3 and l4 then the efferent motor nerve is also carried along the femoral nerve and the effector is the contraction of the quadriceps muscle leading to brisk extension of the leg at the knee joint this picture here shows the way one elicits the patellar or knee jerk sitting position as well as ambulatory you have to remember to strike just below the patella not on the patella that is going to be very painful now you may have a situation when any of these deep tendon reflexes are absent one should try reinforcement now how is it going to be brought about while testing for the patellar reflex the subject is asked to hook the flexed fingers of the two hands together and pull on them at the time the reflex is being elicited similarly when testing the upper limb reflexes the subject is asked to clench his teeth at the time the reflex is being elicited in this way we are activating what is called as the gamma motor neurons and thereby the muscle spindles become more sensitive this diagram here shows how the fingers are interlocked and how one has to pull against each other when we are eliciting the particular reflex next we move on to the ankle jerk stretching of the calf muscles by tapping on the tendo achilles tendon by using the reflex hammer or the patellar hammer is the stimulus muscle spindle of the calf muscles the gastrocnemius muscle is the receptor afferent sensory nerve is carried via the sacral nerves center is s1 and s2 and the efferent motor is also carried along the sacral nerve the effector is the contraction of the gastrocnemius muscle leading to brisk flexion of the ankle this is how this is how we elicit the reflex in the standing position as well as that in the ambulatory position these are the two diagrams to depict how the patellar the plantar sorry the ankle jerk is going to be elicited then we move on to the superficial reflexes for example plantar reflex let's look at it first plantar reflex we have to firmly stroke the skin with a blunt instrument for example the back of the percussion hammer or also a key can be used over the lateral border of the sole of the foot then moving towards the great toe receptor now will be the nociceptors of the skin of overlying the foot afferent sensory nerve is carried via the tibial to the sciatic nerve and then the centers are l5 and s1 the efferent nerve the motor is carried via the sciatic nerve the effector is the toe flexors and the effect will be plantar flexion of all the toes this is a typical normal plantar reflex this picture here shows how a normal plantar reflex is seen when one strokes along the sole of the foot from the heel towards the great toe over the lateral border 
on the picture on the right side shows how a uh, typical Babinski's sign positive will be seen. Dorsiflexion or the great toe as well as fanning of all the toes will be seen. This is Babinski's sign being positive. Next superficial reflex that we are going to discuss is the abdominal reflex. Here we stroke the skin over the upper and lower abdomen. The receptors are the nociceptors of the skin. Now when we stimulate over the skin, we have to move it from the outside to the inside and towards the umbilicus of the individual. Afferent nerve, sensory through the spinal nerve, T7 to T10. Center, T7, T10. Then we have the efferent or the motors through the spinal nerve from the same size spinal segments that is T7 to T10 and then the effector is the upper and lower abdominal muscles. So we find a sudden contraction of the abdominal muscles. This will be the response. The picture on the left shows the the responses. Hope you had fun learning about the reflexes. Thank you for watching. I would appreciate any feedback. Thank you.